There are three big problems with used vehicle appraisals. One, manually sifting through comp vehicles. Two, old book values and ghost comps. Three, no recon visibility. You can solve them all with AutoVision. Now available from Reynolds and Reynolds. Learn more at reyrey.com slash used dash cars. That's R-E-Y, R-E-Y dot com slash used dash cars. Want to dive deeper into the topics you hear about on Daily Drive? We're offering listeners a special offer, 20% off a one-year Automotive News digital subscription. That gets you access to all of our news, information, and analysis made for automotive industry leaders like you. Go to autonews.com slash daily drive promo to redeem. Welcome to Daily Drive for Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. I'm Jamie Butters, Executive Editor of Automotive News in Detroit. And I'm Kellen Walker in Las Vegas. Today on the show, AutoNation earnings slip, Toyota cleans house at Daihatsu, and EV chargers are getting more reliable but less available. Plus, CDK Global CEO Brian McDonald joins the show. I like to joke that AI without data is basically not artificial intelligence. It's just artificial. Let's run through all the news you need to know to keep up in the auto industry. AutoNation's net income dropped 25% in the fourth quarter amid lower new and used vehicle profit margins and higher costs. Fourth quarter net income was about $216 million, down from about $286 million from the same period last year. It's another double-digit percentage decline in net income for the auto retail giant, which also saw a drop in the third quarter. AutoNation's revenue rose 1% to almost $6.8 billion. New vehicle sales rose 7.8% and used vehicle sales declined 3.6%. Despite the drops, the results were better than Wall Street expected. AutoNation shares rose 2% in pre-market trading on Tuesday. Toyota is cleaning house at its troubled mini car maker, Daihatsu. The moves come after an embarrassing safety scandal. Toyota CEO Koji Sato is replacing the top leadership at Daihatsu with trusted Toyota career executives on Tuesday. The goal is to tighten control over the subsidiary and overhaul its operations. Sato says the position of chairman will be abolished. As part of the overhaul, Toyota will focus Daihatsu's business on mini cars and outsource some of its overseas operations to partner companies. Stellantis is the latest automaker to join Tesla's charging network. It will begin equipping EVs with the same charging connector Tesla uses beginning on select 2026 models in North America. Stellantis is among the last major automakers to agree to follow the North American charging standard. It plans to release several EVs this year, including the Ram 1500 Rev pickup and the Jeep Recon utility vehicle. During the transition, Stellantis said it will make adapters available for its vehicles fitted with the combined charging system ports that it currently uses. Meanwhile, public electric vehicle chargers are becoming more reliable, but charger availability is getting worse. That's according to new data from J.D. Power. 18% of public charging attempts failed in the fourth quarter. That's a three-point improvement from the previous nine months. Charging station outages and malfunctions are still the biggest pain points. They made up 71% of failed visits in the quarter. But lack of charger availability or long wait times made up a growing percentage of problems. They represent 20% of failed charging attempts, up from 10% in the fourth quarter of 2021, when EVs were less common. And amid a safety crisis and a pause in operations, Cruz is naming a longtime auto and tech industry veteran as its new safety chief. Steve Kenner will be Cruz's new chief safety officer. He began his career at GM in 1978. He also worked as global director of automotive safety at Ford. He was most recently vice president of safety at self driving trucking company Kodiak and also worked at Apple. Uber, Locomation, Chrysler, and Aurora. And those are today's headlines. Jamie, Stellantis is the latest automaker to join Tesla's charging network. In the last year, I mean, we saw a lot of automakers join that Tesla network. With Tesla having a charging infrastructure that is for the most part reliable and continuing to grow, should the North American charging standard become, well, standard? 
it really is going to be the standard for at least the medium term. You know, right now, uh, the companies have all announced that they're going to Tesla's uh, NACS, but they haven't actually had a chance to do it yet. Uh, then we're going to get this generation of vehicles that are pretty much all going to be built to the Tesla standard. So that'll be the big thing. It'll be curious to me how well it works for those other brand vehicles. I hear nothing but good things about how seamless uh, using the Tesla supercharger is for Tesla owners, especially who bought their car new directly from Tesla. But if you're going there with a Ford or a Mercedes or a Jeep, you know, is it is it going to be seamless? Is it going to go right to your car? Are there going to be hassles with it? And then, of course, longer term, you know, maybe there's better technology like, you know, wireless, you know, inductive charging that makes charging even easier than having a, a pretty fast charger that's reliable and available. When we see Tesla starting a car company, right, it's you think about the cars, how good are the cars, how what are their shortcomings? But part of Tesla's success has come from building the ancillary parts of the business, the the mining, the battery making and the charging network. So this is something where they really did the groundwork and they're reaping the benefits. Gotcha. Coming up, CDK Global CEO Brian McDonald joins the show to talk about his company's growth strategy and how it's using new tech to better serve its customers. That's next on Daily Drive. Data is the backbone of your used vehicle department, but finding the right data and using it to build accurate comp sets can be difficult. How often do you find yourself making manual adjustments to pricing recommendations? Reynolds' newest inventory management solution, AutoVision, can help. Jose Mendoza, General Manager at San Leandro Honda, explains how AutoVision sets his business apart. Everybody's going on third-party vendor sites to see what they're priced at out there. Everybody's uh, looking at auction data. Everybody's looking at transaction data, if you can get it. So the only thing that, that, that really is going to make it different for you is what you're selling them at. So I, I think you have to weigh that a little bit heavier than you do everything else. It doesn't matter if the market says you can sell this car for $30,000 if the last three you've sold have been at 27. We have reports set up through our DMS, through, through Reynolds and & Reynolds, and through AutoVision, which is what we use for our uh, used cars. And we have reports set up in those. And it's something that that I think is, is important to constantly be talking about and constantly be, be going over. AutoVision can help you run your used vehicle department with precise comp sets, real-time inventory data, and reconditioning insights. Visit reyrey.com slash used dash cars to find out more. That's R-E-Y, R-E-Y dot com slash used dash cars. Welcome back to Daily Drive. I'm Jamie Butters with Kellen Walker. Brian McDonald promised a fit and focus strategy when he returned as CEO of CDK Global in July 2022. That's after the dealership management system company was acquired by investment firm Brookfield Business Partners and was taken private. McDonald's goal? to make CDK more focused on innovation and provide better customer service. I caught up with McDonald at the NADA show in Las Vegas to talk about how that strategy is working out, as well as how the advent of disruptive technology is affecting CDK's business. Brian McDonald, welcome to Daily Drive here at the Automotive News booth at the NADA show in Las Vegas. Jamie, great to be here with you, and I really love the new booth this year. This is really fun. Great to have you back. So... What is your, I'm, I'm opening up all these interviews with this question, you know, what is your message or your mission for this NADA show? Yeah, our mission for this show, as it is for what we come to work and do every day, is to help our dealers sell and service more cars mm -hmm. and do it as efficiently as they possibly can. Sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, I understand you announced a new product, a virtual assistant tool. Um, what's cool about that? Well, I think starting with the name, uh, we, we call it AVA but the spelling is A-I-V-A, so it's Artificial Intelligence Virtual Assistant. Ah. And um, you know we'll, we'll have that in all our products. Um, actually, dealers will be able to white label it to another name if they want. If they don't like Ava, they can call it something else for their dealer group. <laughs> but you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of hype about AI and a lot of talk about AI. We've had AI in our products and machine learning in our products for a number of years, helping dealers um, understand 
propensity to buy, prospective services, add-ons, etc. But now with Ava, um, we're taking this to a whole new level. And I think what a lot of people misunderstand about AI is that um, it's really about the data. You know, right. there's, there's, the, there's the tech, but it's really about the data. Mm -hmm. And I like to joke that AI without data is basically not artificial intelligence, it's just artificial. <laughs> and so, you know, nobody has the robust data that CDK has mm -hmm. as the system of record for 55% of the cars sold in North America and the system of record for 53% of the repair orders in North America. Mm -hmm. Nobody has more rich data than us, and that's the capability we're bringing to our dealers with AVA to help them back to the core mission of selling and serving cars as efficiently as possible. Do you have any other uh, tech advances that you're showing or highlighting at this year's show? Yes, absolutely. We're showing our uh, Intelligent Suite, which is a brand new product, which just came out a few weeks ago. We went into general availability. This is a really uh, a hot product for us. We had a dealer uh, look at it this morning who liked it, basically said, send me the contracts, Docky signed them today. <laughs> and then he actually brought back four dealers to look at the product and telling them, like, you guys should buy this product too. So. It's, uh, it's really busy over there. We call it Intelligent Suite, a whole new cloud-based modern reporting tool, easy to use. We also have um, enhancements with our service scheduling and our fixed ops products, and of course, modern retail. And then lastly, a lot of our dealers are getting really the first chance to see our dealership experience platform, which we rolled out starting in uh, August. Mm -hmm. We now have uh, over 500 dealers enabled for the dealership experience platform and uh, dealers are coming in and, and uh, understanding uh, that platform as well. I'm sure being able to demonstrate that in person uh, in a venue like this is very effective. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great time you know, for dealers to come by. To, you know, it's not unusual for them to stop in for five or 10 minutes. They're having a quick look at the dealership experience platform, which is really a new category of software for our space, really meant to help dealers uh, become more efficient and then they are coming back, you know, as the day frees up and they have more time, they're coming back hmm. to have a deeper look. <laughs> oh, and then they're there and they're like, oh, look at this intelligent suite. Okay, I got, I don't, I got another meeting to go to, but I'll come back for that later. So <laughs> it's great, you know. The, double dipping. On yeah, the, look, the, it's what's great about NADA, you know, it's we're here, we're focused, the customers are here, they're focused, they're looking, and we get to see some old friends and faces and it's a great way to connect. Yeah, it's been out almost six months. Are you already starting to improve it? Oh yeah, well, we're working on uh, dealership experience platform, DXP we call it for short, okay. um, every day. And um, you know, the nice thing for our dealers is we're, uh, we're, you know, we're moving them to that uh, platform as part of their re renewal with no uh, installation fees for that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's our commitment to them and uh, hmm. it's our new platform. And uh, you know, the reception that we've had since we rolled it out in August has been uh, super positive. Cool. So. You know, what's your view on the industry? You know, I feel like we, we're seeing more normal volumes, uh, but we're starting to see almost old style uh, inventories and uh, uh, incentives are creeping up, margins are getting squeezed. What's the what's the mood? What's the your sense of the true economics of the industry? Yeah, my my short version um, is we're in a we're in the return to normalcy period, uh, yeah. right? Uh, you know, in, inventories are kind of back. You know reasonably normal levels depending on model or make and incentives are coming back it's a real time for dealers to get back to the basics you know uh, the dealers i talk to I expect profitability to be down in in uh, 24 but still above 2019 okay. and you know dealers have had a, a number of great years uh, for profitability the balance sheets have never been stronger uh, but the the environment is going to be tougher but look these are dealers they're you know, classic entrepreneurs, they've been through downturns before, you know, 24 is not going to look like 08 or 09. <laughs> yep. uh, it, it, it'll, it'll be, uh, I think, a reasonably good year, better than better than 19. I mean, at the same time, you know, look, there's lots of risk out there, whether it's geopolitical risk, the economy right now, it feels like we're in kind of Goldilocks, you know, interest rates are still high, inflation's coming down, employment's staying strong. So that's all pretty good macroeconomic trends. But uh, I think you know we're all still a little bit risky, a little bit worried about the risk in the in the broader economy. And so that again, that's back to what I call return to normalcy. Dealers got to focus on the basics, how to how to sell and service cars as efficiently as they can. Yep. 
Uh, how about your business? Uh, I read in Automotive News that uh, you're back in uh, growth mode. What, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so we're focused on growth at CDK. I mean, we're investing in our products, as I talked about, Intelligent Suite and the DXP and other enhancements. So we're really in a growth mode. Um, you know, we're, we've got, I think, 100 open positions in the company. So we're, we're looking for talented people. We're doing everything we can to retain the best people we have. And we're really investing um, in our products. And we're also investing in our internal systems to improve our customer experience, to make us more efficient internally. Um, and so we're, you know, we're, we're really in an invest and grow mode. I mean, unemployment is still really low. What kinds of areas are you trying to hire in and are you finding good candidates? Yeah, we, you know, I think what's, what's great about our company, we, you know, most of our people are working in a hybrid environment and that's very popular. And so we really, uh, when we look for talent, we can, we can get, you know, get the best, the best of the people, uh, whether they're in Canada or the U.S. And, um, and they can live where they want. Uh, you know, for most jobs. And so, um, so that's helping us. And uh, look, we, we sit at the epicenter of, of automotive, right? We're 55% system of record for 55% of the, the vehicles, $540 billion of commerce on our systems. That's about 2.6% of the gross domestic product of the company. So we really matter to the auto industry. Mm-hmm. And so when we're attracting people from outside the industry, you know, they're, they're very attracted to come into our company because of the impact uh, you can have on the auto industry at, by being part of CDK. And then obviously people that are in the industry are attracted to CDK, be, again, because of the impact we have on the industry. Mm-hmm. Brian McDonald is the CEO of CDK Global. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Jamie. Always a pleasure. That's Daily Drive for today. I'm Jamie Butters. And I'm Kellen Walker. Thanks to Automotive News coordinating producer Jake Neer, as well as our own Dan Schein, Hans Greimel, Vince Bond Jr., Hannah Lutz, and Mark Homer for their reporting for today's podcast. You can get the latest news on retail technology, earnings results, and everything happening in the auto industry at autonews.com. If you enjoy the podcast, remember to like, leave a review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. 